Hey man, thanks for checking out Barely the Kid Adventures. In today's episode, we'll be taking a look at the evolution of the Cleveland Browns' iconic dog pound. The Cleveland Browns' Hanford top dog Dixon never could have imagined the phenomenon that the dog pound would become when he created it back in the mid-80s, nor the extent of its ongoing popularity today. Hanford and Frank Minifield initially barked at their defensive linemen to motivate them against the opposing team's offense. As nearby fans picked up on their barking activities, they returned their barks. Shortly after, Hanford and Minifield put up a dog pound banner in Cleveland Municipal Stadium's East End Bleacher section, and the dog pound concept was quickly embraced by the rabid fans in that section of the stadium. As the newly formed Dog Pound's popularity soared, lively fans in their best dog-themed regalia became fixtures in that section. Big Dog, Bone Lady, Macho Fan, D-Dog, and Pumpkin Head, amongst others, were often featured on TV when the Dog Pound was shown during Browns games. And as far as barking goes, it seemed everyone was doing it. In Tracing the Dog Pound's roots, the original Dog Pound was hosted in cavernous Cleveland Municipal Stadium, which shared the venue with baseball's Cleveland Indians. Pre-Dog Pound, the Bleachers was a no-frills place to watch a Browns game, featuring wooden benches in an open-air setting, and the cheapest ticket you could get. For Browns games, the Bleachers were filled with hard-working, and often hard-drinking, passionate blue-collar fans who were the most vocal and rowdy group in the stadium. And part of the Bleachers' experience for most guys was an alcohol-induced visit to the packed men's bathroom in the communal urinal troughs where many lively Browns game day discussions were held. So how wild could the pre-dog pound Bleachers get? Well, Referees had to switch to the other side of the field to get away from the rowdy bleacher fans who were hurling whiskey bottles along with beer and pop cans. We're not talking recyclable plastic here. Check out the cops scaling the fence to restore order. If Hanford wanted rowdy fans for the dog pound, the bleachers was the place. Once the dog pound craze got going in the mid-80s, Fans had fun dressing up in their best dog-based attire, making some creative dog-themed signs and barking often and loudly to cheer on the Browns. Throwing dog biscuits also became popular, Milk Bone becoming the preferred brand. Some fans tossed dog biscuits to the point that it became an issue, like in the browns Broncos game where the referees had to move play down to the other side of the stadium. Check out all the debris in the video in the end zone. Mostly dog biscuits. All right, they have Michael Young in there. Elway is complaining. Flying debris, we're going to change ends of the field. Third down. Now the dog pound throwing things out of the end zone seats. I've never seen this done before. For it and he received it. So it'll be third and ten of the four at the opposite end. Danford Dixon. Stopping the Broncos after moving to the enclosed side of the stadium, the Browns won the game with the long, wind aided field goal as time expired. The news article notes both batteries and eggs being tossed. A throwback to earlier bleachers' rowdiness, adding to the dog pound's wild reputation. The following week, Bengals head coach Sam Weish made reference to Cleveland when Cincinnati fans started getting out of hand. Will the next person that sees anybody throw anything onto this field, point them out, or get them out of here? You don't live in Cleveland! You live in Cincinnati! 
And let's just say the dog pound gave Coach Sam and the Bengals a warm welcome the next few times they visited. And in 1995, when the city of Cleveland was blindsided and the Browns were whisked away to Baltimore, the dog pound erupted one final time in the last home game. Play was halted and they had to move once again to the other side of the stadium. So anybody who watched a game in the dog pound or old municipal stadium, they've got plenty of lively stories to tell. Mostly related to somebody drinking too much alcohol, which was quite common back in the day. Um, one of the stories that I recall was with a bunch of my buddies in the dog pound, we're watching the Browns play the Lions. Some fan from Detroit, just kind of a small guy, he had his Detroit Lions pen with him, and for whatever reason, he seemed the need to, after the Lions did a good play, to stand up, with his pen and turn around to the dog pound, kind of wave it and yell and, you know, kind of taunting the crowd. Um, obviously, the dog pound fans didn't like it too much. And uh, after about the second or third time he did it, um, some rather large Cleveland Browns fan just kind of walked down the bleachers and just very calmly just grabbed the pennant out of the guy's hand Pulls out his Zippo lighter, just lit the pennant on fire, let it burn for a couple seconds, threw it down. Of course, the crowd cheers, and then just walked back to his seat. And that was kind of some of the crazy stuff you'd see if you sat out in the dog pound. And then there's this uh, story. It's almost taken on an urban legend tone over the years, but I'm telling you it happened. And one of my best friends, T, that I was with at the time, he was right there with me. We're watching the Browns game up in the dog pound, way up near the top. And everybody's cheering per usual. Most people had been drinking, um, probably a little too much. And as we're watching the game and we, we kind of glance over, we see this one guy definitely had way too much to drink, but looked like he was having a great time at the game and smiling and laughing and everything. And he's holding up what looked like at first glance, like one of those, like, you know, rat toys or whatever from like Party City that they sell around Halloween. So upon closer look, we're like maybe about 20, 25 feet away. He was holding a real dead rat. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. It was like a dead rat. We, we had to take a closer look, and it was a dead rat. And he was just holding it and cheering with it. Um, like I said, this is way at the top of the bleachers in the dog pound. And for whatever reason, he, he just seemed to be having the time of his life. So as the game went on, um, we kept glancing over at him, and he was looking at us, and we were just kind of yelling and having a good time. And we just dubbed him. Uh, rap man. So for the rest of the game, we just, you know, when something good had happened, we'd glance over and be like, rap man. And he, he was like holding that rat and he just loved it. And like I said, it, it's hard to believe, but I'm telling you, it's true. I got witnesses. And even as the, you know, songs would come on, you know, um, while there was a break, like they played Queens, We Will Rock You, when it was playing, he was, you know, holding it and kind of going with the music. And me and T were like kind of glancing over at him and we were yelling like, you know, we will rap you. And Rap Man, he loved it. He loved it when we were calling him Rap Man. And all I can tell you is it's unbelievable, but it's true. So after an uproar in the city of Cleveland and some serious lobbying with the NFL, in 1999, Cleveland got a new team and a brand new stadium. And a new dog pound. The new dog pound kept its bleachers type seating, but beyond that, there were many changes. For one thing, 
the dog pound was no longer the cheapest ticket to see a Browns game, and the dog pound had two levels versus one. The dog pound's new setting also provided an opportunity for Browns players to jump into the stands after a touchdown, a la Green Bay's Lambeau Leap. Unlike the old stadium's dog pound, where there was a low fence and there was just hugs and high fives after a score. But what about the new Dog Pound's fans? The Dog Pound still hosted some of the most passionate fans in the stadium, which is amazing taking into consideration how bad the Browns have been until recently. The current Dog Pound may not be as wild as its predecessor, but it's definitely had its moments, like Bottlegate. Beer bottles flew in response to some terrible officiating, with the Dog Pound contributing more than its fair share due to the proximity of play. Chad Ochocinco Johnson got less than a warm welcome when he leapt into the Dog Pound after scoring a touchdown against the Browns, and a beer shower as a bonus. Chad reminisced years later about his beer shower greeting in the dog pound. And most recently, the dog pound was a setting for more controversy as several Tennessee Titan players jumped into the dog pound after scoring a touchdown in a blowout win against the Browns, receiving a beer shower in the face. The players didn't like it. A Twitter war ensued resulting in the Browns fan being banned indefinitely from the stadium. So how wild or mild is today's dog pound? Well, hard to believe, but it's been two decades since Bottlegate, and anybody throwing anything there in recent years has been removed quickly from the stadium. First Energy staff has made a concerted effort urging spectators to report the unruly behavior of other fans via text messaging. They make several announcements throughout the game, urging people to watch out and report those wild fans nearby. And the story about the fan, who wasn't drunk, cheering a little too zealously and was kicked out of the stadium. So, today's dog pound, mild or wild? The Browns continue to have one of the most loyal and passionate fan bases in not only football, but in all sports. But there's no denying today's dog pound is quite different from its mid-80s origins. Given a dog pound ticket is no longer the cheapest ticket to watch a Browns game, along with today's more politically correct times, have changed the fan demographic there. Putting together this video, I looked at how others describe today's dog pound. They labeled the dog pound as neutered, gentrified, and commercialized, amongst other terms. Once again, not my words. Today's dog pound continues to be marketed heavily as this wild, rowdy place to watch a Browns game, while at the same time, First Energy staff continue to make a concerted effort to discourage and control unruly fan behavior. What do you think? Thanks again for checking out Billy the Kid Adventures and my Dog Pound video. For more of my Cleveland-themed videos, like the one about Margaret Hamilton, Cleveland's Wicked Witch, the link is below. And if you want some more lively Cleveland tales, take a look at my graphic novel, Hey You Punks! about growing up on Cleveland's gritty near west side back in the day. Link is below also.